I think there are various things going on. There are some overriding trends which we mustn't lose sight of, but we shouldn't be panicked by. Um, trends such as increasing longevity. Um, we know that when pensions were first introduced 100 years ago, uh, men were only expected to live a year after their retirement age. That's now 20, closer to 25 years than not. Uh, and for women it's higher. Uh, and so we are in a circumstance where we've got to look and shape um, social policy and public policy to deal with the realities of what Diana quite rightly called uh, something we should be enormously happy and proud of, and that is that we're all living longer. Um, that we can expect to spend many years post uh, our current retirement age anyway uh, in relatively good health, that uh, people are beginning to want to work past their older, the old established retirement ages, and we should definitely enable them to do that if they're fit and they wish to. Um, and that it's almost like we're developing a fourth age of, uh, of our species. Um, we have retirement and then we have very, very old age, and there are different policies that you need to think about um, when it comes to how you deal with active retirements and people who, um, when they get to 65 or whatever, still feel like they've got a, a lot that they uh, want to give. Uh, and obviously, those that are in very, very old age need to be looked after and supported properly. And that change in longevity does mean we have to think very differently about how we provide both services and support. Uh, and as always, um, Government policy of any um, sort of any government takes a while to catch up with the realities. We have a sandwich generation now, they're called, and they're not those finger sandwiches at the back. Um, thank goodness they were here, or oh, goodness knows when any of us would have got anything to eat um, later today. But they're the women that uh, have to care for young children and older relatives. Increasingly, at the same time, we have a phenomenon now where um, some of our carers. Um, who are caring for mums and dads are in their 70s themselves. Uh, you don't only have an issue of older carers with uh, people who are married, um, you actually have um, women who are in their 70s looking after 90, 95 year old um, parents and uh, older relatives. That means we have to do a great deal to redesign how we think about support, at local <coughs> authority level and at national level. Are we doing it at the moment? No, because we've got a government uh, at the moment that um, has walked away from plans on social care, which were being well developed before the election, and that's an area that's of enormous potential benefit to, to pensioners. And we've got a government that has decided it wants to use the spectre of a deficit, um, which is important, but not the end of the world, um, to make an argument that we should retreat from pension provision, that the pension provision we've got in the public sector is somehow too expensive to carry on and therefore should be scaled back. And there's an overwhelming view, and I think Chris's comment um, more than hinted at it, that there's 15% of people in the private sector now have access to additional pension saving over and above uh, their basic pensions in the workplace. Um, 85% in the public sector because we have pay-as-you-go systems, the public sector embraces part-time workers who are now allowed to be in pension schemes and all of that. And somehow the answer to this is to say that the public sector stuff is too expensive and therefore we have to somehow level it down to the totally and utterly inadequate level that now exists in the private sector. Let's have a look at what happened. Why do we have this disparity? Because in the 1950s, when we had a much more paternalistic sort of corporate existence, companies decided that they wanted to op uh, offer um, occupational pension schemes. The trade union, union movement got in there and helped negotiate quite a lot of those systems. And I think the state then decided, oh, well, we can withdraw from the direct provision of um, you know, an adequate basic state pension because these additional pensions um, are going to do the job. Um, and we'll give them tax relief um, for doing it and we'll opt them out of um, national insurance contributions. And we've created a system where, um, certainly in the 1950s, 60s, 70s, uh, the thought was that the private sector could do it, the private sector wanted to do it, and so we um, spent our time thinking about how we could build that up. What happened then was that the private sector um, suddenly decided it didn't really want to do this anymore, and partially because of the changes in um, accountancy rules that I won't bore you with, 
uh, but international financial accounting rules mean that uh, a lot of the pension liabilities that build up in companies now have to go directly onto the balance sheet, uh, and that makes it very, very difficult for companies to have large um, structures of, uh, of potential or nominal debts, at least on their balance sheets, which can go up and down in size in an alarming way that uh, chief financial officers don't like very much. Um, People underestimated increases in longevity, uh, certainly in the private sector, for um, trying to value what the liabilities that were being built up in occupational pension schemes in the private sector were. They completely missed the huge increases in longevity that we've, uh, we're, we're all now enjoying. Um, so at the same time as they should have been dealing with that, they were actually taking pensions holidays. Um, because of their original way of accounting for that meant that uh, they'd underestimated the liabilities they were taking on. Um, when all of that came together, I think a lot of companies um, were being exposed to global competition in a way that meant there was a decline in paternalistic um, corporate existences. Um, and uh, they just want rid, in a lot of ways, of the um, hassle of dealing with occupational pension schemes. What do we do about that as a society? I think we have to say that the state has to have a role here. Um, whereby we, in the past we've outsourced it to occupational pension provision, but now since um, the private sector is so um, completely unwilling really to offer very much in the way of adequate second pension provision, we have to look at what the state can do to underpin at least a minimum. Um, and that is what the workplace pension reforms, the 2012 reforms are meant to be about. Um, the Turner consensus, if you want to call that, it that is a beginning of creating a, a, quite a modest floor um, to begin to establish both mechanisms, the NEST mechanism, National Employment Savings Trust, um, to begin to have a vehicle that people who, who uh, could save into without large costs accruing, so they actually get out more than they put in, um, a compulsory element for employers so that they have to uh, give a contribution to even people on modest and low earnings. 11 million extra of them if the scheme comes in, um, and uh, also government contributions. Now, I mean, the government's underpinning over the years since the 50s of private occupational um, pensions isn't cheap because the tax relief that's given for pension saving amounts to 20 odd billion a year um, in uh, government, foregone government revenue. Uh, now, most of that goes to people who are. Um, much more privileged than those that have no provision at all. Uh, and uh, it's got more and more skewed towards the very top end of um, provision, um, partially because of uh, simplification rules and changes to the tax system that happened in 2004 that I won't bore you with, but I won't. Um, which means that now 25% of the costs of that foregone tax <coughs> income go to the top 1% of pension savers um, and are worth about £230,000 a year to each one of those 1.5, um, those, those top 1.5%. Now, at the same time, we have large numbers of um, uh, not very well paid uh, and modestly earning people in the private sector who aren't saving anything and therefore don't qualify for a government um, tax relief payment. And we just have to rejig